Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's Raven here. Today, I wanted to talk about something that's kind of been on my mind due to the recent release of Blaze Blue Cross Tag Battle and the way that it's being uh, received and talked about, and the way that the um, long term competitive community, the FGC, the people who live, breathe, and die fighting games have an impact on the overall health of a new game. This is going to be a touchy subject. There's probably some stuff that I'm going to say that I could have put better. There's probably some people who are going to leave this video offended. And there are probably some of you who are going to nod your head and say amen like we're in fucking church. So, yeah. Basically, the point that I want to get across is that I honestly believe that the FGC as a whole has built up this culture of complaints whenever a new game launches, where being dissatisfied is the popular and cool thing to do, right? And part of this is because there's been some screw-ups in the past and there's definitely been some bad choices and there's definitely been some things that have damaged you know competitive nature of certain games I don't want to get into all that but history aside what's happened is that every time a new game launches instead of uh, instead of getting excited about the game and giving it its fair shot Everybody is rushing to make snap judgments when they've had their hands on the game for less than a day. All right? And the reason for this, I believe, is because everybody thinks that it's just super cool and super fun to, uh, to complain about things because it makes you all feel smart. Right? There's nothing intelligent in your minds to being like, yeah, this game is good. I'm learning it. It's got some cool mechanics. I haven't gotten everything down yet, but I'm enjoying it, and I'm continuing to figure it out. I'm sure I'll have a better, better handle on everything in a couple of weeks after I've spent some more time with it. No, y'all motherfuckers don't do that. Instead, what you do is you spend a couple hours playing online in a network and beta, or you spend a couple hours, you know, offline in whatever offline mode is available, and then you immediately rush to the nearest social media platform, you hit up a Twitter, a Discord server, you hit up a, a fucking Twitch streamer, and you're like, man, this game sucks. Let me tell you why. Auto combos are dumb. This is a dumb mechanic. This, this game mechanic's fucking dumb, and I, I'll tell you why. Because it's dumb. It takes out all the skill, man. Man, push blocks. Push blocks are dumb. Why is push blocks so available all the time? That's so dumb. Push blocks are dumb mechanic. Oh, man. These overheads are too fast. They need to slow those down. Oh man, these throw tacks, the window's too small. They need to widen that gap. Oh man, and you start weighing in with all these opinions because I don't fucking know. You want people to think you're smart or something. I don't, I, I, I don't know what your motivations are. But everybody hops in with their, with their bullshit opinions about something for a game that they played for half a second, okay? And this is fine. You're entitled to do that, right? Like, that's kind of the point. Like, you're supposed to provide feedback. You're supposed to give input. You're supposed to do all this. But you dumb motherfuckers do this shit like day one, hands on a game, writing long ass twit longers and fucking novels about how a game sucks. And I don't get it. I don't understand what value that really provides to people because one, your, ping your opinion is underinformed. I don't give a shit if you're like the best player in the world. After a day with a brand new game, there is no way that you're going to understand everything. There might be things you don't like, and it's fine not to like something, but in the FGC, we don't do that. We don't go in and we say like, okay, so, you know, here's the thing. We're playing we're playing uh, we're playing Dragon Ball and uh, you know, Dragon Ball Fighters and I I spent, you know, I play all weekend. And after playing for two days, I, I just don't like auto combos. I just don't like them, man. I feel like uh, I, 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 just, I just don't like them. They lower the skill level. That's the thing you hear all the time. Auto combos lower the skill level of the game. 
And for me as a longtime fighting game player, I think that lowers the overall skill ceiling of the game, which is bad. You know, I feel like fighting games should maintain a high skill ceiling. Now, you guys don't present opinions like that. You don't present it as opinion. You present it as fact. You guys go in there and say, auto combos are going to ruin fighting games forever. Auto combos are the worst thing imaginable. Arxis is dumb. Delete this game. This is for noobs only. And you all go on these long ass rants that eventually get ignored as the lifespan of the game goes on. We all realize there is actual competitive depth to this new title. And y'all can shut the fuck up. We don't come to grips with that for a couple of months, right? But in the meantime, here's what happens. In the meantime, the players, the casuals, the new blood, the people who've always wanted to get into a fighting game but aren't sure, they're out there on beta weekend and after beta weekend, not playing, right? Because they weren't hardcore enough to do that. They had things to do that weekend. But they're interested, so what do they do? They go hop on Reddit, they hop on Twitter, you know, they go look around, they ask their buddies in the Discord, maybe they even join the official Discord and just start lurking. They're eavesdropping, and what do they see? They don't see a whole bunch of longtime fighting game fans passionate about a new title. Nah, the stuff that stands out is this underinformed vocal minority who's just shitting on the game mechanics. Because, I don't know, it makes you guys feel smart or something. Shitting on the game mechanics, and now this new player is looking at that and being like, wow, this guy saying a lot of words and terminology. He's talking about one-frame links and Oki and, uh, you know, stagger pressure and all these terms I don't understand. This guy must be really smart. He certainly sounds more informed than I do, and according to this guy, this game's terrible. This game sucks. I'm not going to play this game. And that is a big problem. The FGC has always wanted to grow, right? We've always wanted more people to come out. We've always wanted more tournaments. We've always wanted to get more friends excited about fighting games. We've always wanted more people at our locals. We've always wanted more people to get involved in this stuff, right? Like, as, as much as we're rough around the edges, like, we're not exclusive. We want you to come out and fight. But what we don't, what I think we don't realize is just how dramatically our voices can impact the consideration of a new player who's never touched a fighting game, how it can impact their decision to play at all. All right? Now, I'm not saying that we affect everyone. We don't. Some people, they don't do research. They don't go looking for information. Right? Those people are just going to buy a game if they think it looks cool, which is great. But in today's society, there is straight up market research in the business world that proves out that 80% of all major purchase decisions include a research step on the internet. You guys can go look this up. Google published a paper about five or six years ago called The Zero Moment of Truth that talks about how people today use search online to do research on a product before they choose to buy it. And they all base a, a portion, you know, 50%, I think was the, was the number they quoted, 50% of the purchase decision comes from however they're influenced by what they find online, whether that's review scores or um, whether it's user reviews or just discussions about the product, you know, what have you. And for major purchasing decisions, this research step is, is there 80% of the time. And this was five years ago when this, re when this paper was originally put out, right? And if you think about your own purchasing habits, you probably do the same thing, right? Like, let's say you're on the fence about buying a video game, right? Like, you're not sure if you want to get God of War. You know, you, you don't know. You know, you know the genre exists, right? Well, what do you do? God of War comes out, all these reviews start pouring out, your friends start talking about it. You, you might look at a video review or a trailer or whatever, but you look at it online before you decide to actually go pick it up. And when, you know, thousands of people are going like, holy shit, God of War is like one of the best games ever made, that's going to influence your decision to drop 60 bucks on that game or not. It's exactly the same way with fighting games, okay? Except that when players go out to research fighting games, half of the time these games aren't even covered by traditional gaming press, right? Like, I haven't seen GameSpot do a, a full-page, you know, coverage on 
plays Blue Cross Tag Battle. I haven't seen it on IGN. I haven't, you know, heard about the Polygon article talking about the logistics involved in getting, you know, four different properties included in, in one fighting game title. Like, you don't, you don't see it, right? So, so where do they go? They got to go to the community. They got to go to Twitter. They got to go to Discord. They got to talk to us, right? And when those people go out looking for us and all they find is a, is a seabed of complaints... It's going to prevent those people from buying the game. They're going to see that and be like, wow, man, if the people who love this genre and were excited for this game and they're not into it, well, I just shouldn't bother. I'll, I'll wait until the next fighting game and maybe that'll be good. You know, I got other things to play. I can go play Fortnite. And, like, this is a sticky subject, right? Like, this, this isn't a, a clean-cut thing. Like, I'm not telling y'all to stop complaining. I think that... As a, as a competitive community, we have a responsibility to provide feedback to the developers. 100%. Like, getting player feedback is invaluable. And if we, don't, if we don't like a mechanic, if you don't like a character, if you don't like a move, if, if you found some crazy interaction that feels like a bug, whatever, whatever it is, right? Like, we need to let developers know about that stuff. When we're dissatisfied or we find a problem, we present your feedback. By all means, do that. But just realize that in the way that you are prov providing that feedback, when the discussion becomes so incredibly toxic around the game being different, it can permanently damage sales, it can damage the lifespan of the game, and it can damage the amount of new people who get into a title. I think a really good example of this was... Um, there's, there's been a couple recent examples, and most of them have been on Capcom's side. And I know everybody likes to give Capcom a lot of shit, but, like, if we think, if we look back and we think about, like, Street Fighter V, right? Like, we all know Street Fighter V didn't sell well. And a big part of that was because within the first few weeks of the game launching, there, the amount of um, non-first-day buys dropped dramatically compared to previous titles because... The competitive community was so upset about the mechanics in the game. There was this, there was a huge groundswell of complaints about how like the game was oversimplified and how, you know, all of these things that we had in four went away and you know blah blah blah. And it, it got to the point where the people on the Street Fighter subreddit actually had to like make a new rule that eliminated people from talking. That basically said, hey, if you're going to post a complaint about the game, we have a separate subreddit for that. You guys got to go over here if you're going to, you know, our Street Fighter feedback or whatever it was. You know, this, this, this subreddit is no longer about complaints. This is for people who are genuinely interested in the game and are trying to improve. And they actually had to take steps to make the landing pad of our Street Fighter more beginner welcoming. Because so many people were showing up and going like, holy shit, you guys hate this game. I'm not going to play it. And like people would actually post that. They'd be like... I, you know, I was thinking about picking up Street Fighter V, but all of you seem to absolutely hate the shit out of the game, so I'm not going to buy it. Thanks for, you know, thanks for the heads up. And, like, from my perspective, if your goal is to, if your goal is to attract new players and get new players in the game and grow the fighting game community and all that kind of stuff, like, those complaints and the, the level of, like, venomous hatred that's ingrained in these complaints right like is just so negative it has such a negative impact right um and i'm not saying we need to give devs a pass i'm not saying that we need to you know that we shouldn't complain when there's reasons but if you think about it man everybody who complained about street fighter 5 was everybody who had ever played a previous street fighter and because the mechanics in Street Fighter V were so different at this core level, a lot of people didn't like it because change is hard. Change is really hard. And there's a really big difference between looking at something and going like, man, like, this is clearly just broken. Like, this interaction doesn't work the way it's supposed to. And, like, going, I disagree with all of the choices that Capcom made when designing their new fighting game, and it sucks. It's just the worst we should all go back to Street Fighter 4. And, you know, since then, we've seen Street Fighter stuff before. And so, 
again, like this is not an easy conversation. This is this is weird, right? Like, because there's this there's these diametrically opposed things. I don't want people to run around saying like, oh, this game's perfect, just so that we can attract new people, right? I think really what I would like to see is people learning how to give feedback in a way that frames it in a manner so the devs know what the F, what the competitive community what the FGC wants to see changed without completely deterring new players right a lot of the mechanics and a lot of the balance issues and all that other stuff that we like to you know consistently talk about as a competitive community just doesn't apply to somebody who's new to the game. Someone who's new to fighting games is still spending a whole bunch of time throwing quarter circles, right? They're still trying to figure out how to, how to consistently do specials. They're still trying to figure out how to jump cancel. You know, like they've got, they got baby step problems. They don't, they don't look at things and be like, man, the fact that, that jabs are like five frames in this is totally busting everything, in my opinion. They don't understand any of that, man. New players in a fighting game just want to look cool and have fun. That's basically it. But when they go and they see this groundswell of complaints about how a game feels like shit, how this game, you know, game feels like shit, game looks like ass. These mechanics suck. These characters are broken. The game's unbalanced, right? All those things will just deter that person from ever being like, man, I think Ryu is fucking cool. Man, Blaze Blue is one of the most anime games I've ever seen. I should go play that. And I feel like every every major game uh, that exists in the FGC, you know, every every franchise we've got, all the big ones that have had multiple games, have all at some point in time been afflicted with this problem, you know? At some point in time, there's been a game where the competitive community was like, this is so shit, that the game just didn't do well. And the, and the scene didn't grow, and it dwindled off, and everybody forgot about it. I think it'll really, so like for example, this happened with Tekken 6. Tekken 6, uh, from, uh, from what I recall, and I wasn't closely following the scene, but this was my experience with Tekken 6, was the competitive community hated Tekken 6. It was the most broken version of Tekken ever. It was incredibly boring to watch, and it was all about Steve Fox and like maybe two other characters. And the, the game was so unbalanced, there was no point in playing it. You would go and you'd turn on a tournament and commentators would just sound bored. You know, they, the commentary would sound like, oh, yep, here comes another jab. Oh, yep, here comes another low. Like, people were so disillusioned with the game for whatever reason, right? And I, I don't know the story behind Tekken 6. I wasn't part of the scene. You know what I was? I was a guy who loved Tekken. I was a guy who grew up with Tekken, uh, Tekken 2, Tekken 3, Tekken Tag Tournament. Tekken uh, was one of my favorite games, and I really wanted to get back into Tekken. And so a few months after Tekken 6 came out, and I happened to hear that there was a Tekken 6, right? Because I wasn't following the fighting games closely. So I heard about it a couple months after launch. I go to go check it out. I'm like, huh, I wonder what they're saying on, on the forums. Is Tekken part of SRK? No, there's this Tekken Zaibatsu thing. All right, let's check that out. Let's go watch a tournament. Let's, you know, let's let's see what's up. And everybody just was just shitting on the game. Like everybody was full of complaints. Every every forum comment had some snide remark about some OP character. You know, like nobody was nobody seemed genuinely passionate about the game. Nobody seemed excited about it. And so what did I do? I didn't get Tekken Six. I didn't buy Tekken Six for like another two years until it was on sale for five bucks. And then I played off, you know, for ten bucks or whatever. And then I played offline and you know dicked around for a day and then like i was like huh this feels different it's not like how i remember tech and tag this game must be shit they're all right and then i never played it again you know like it and like yeah that's my story but this is the kind of thing that gets replicated across thousands and thousands of people in different variations so my thing is is like here's the thing Here, here's what I would actually like people to do with this discussion is I want you to keep giving feedback I want you to keep complaining I want you to keep holding 
uh, you know, keep holding the devs accountable, keep doing all of those things. But if you actually like the game and y'all just complaining because you want to sound smart to your FGC peers, and you want to get on some long ass discussion about how you think having DPs on a button macro is just the worst thing for fighting games ever, like, okay, fine, have that conversation. But don't let that be the thing that takes over the entire representation of the game. If you honestly like the game, if you're having fun, as you should with all video games, you know, at the end of the day, video games are about fun. Those things are happening. Make sure that you talk about that with at least an equal amount of time that you spend giving feedback about things that you don't like. Because that new player will be able to understand that. A new player will be able to go like, okay, this experienced fella likes the game, has some complaints about what's changed. I get that, man. I played League of Legends, or I played Dota or Counter-Strike or whatever. I get that change isn't easy. But a new player wants to know if the game's fun and if it's worth its time. And so, if you honestly like a game and you think it's fun and it's worth someone's time, make sure you express that in addition to everything else. That's the only thing that I can ask for. Because the last thing that I want to see is in this resurgence of fighting games that we're having right now, where Arxis is, you know, spitting out all these amazing titles and, you know, we've got all this attention and all of this interest, you know, people who are young, new generation getting into fighting games for the first time, all this other stuff, like, I want to make sure that they understand that difference between us being salty about change or about things that are new and how we're adapting to that and how we enjoy discussing those topics as a community. But also to understand that, yeah, actually, despite all the complaints that we had about Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, and even though you couldn't go anywhere without seeing people complaining about it, there were still loads of people who actually loved the gameplay and thought the game was great. That even though Street Fighter V was very different from Street Fighter IV and a lot of the competitive community dropped it after the first year, there's still people who absolutely love that game. And if you've never played a fighting game before and you think Ryu is just like the coolest character ever, then yeah, go play Street Fighter V, man. Street Fighter V is a good fighting game. It's not the best Street Fighter ever made. But if you think it's cool, go get it. Go play it. That's what I would like to see happen. This is something that, again, throughout the course of this video, this topic ain't easy. This topic does not have one single solution. And it's going to be divisive. That's cool. Hopefully talking through all this has given you a little bit of perspective. And I don't know if this means that in all those community discords, you create some channel for like feedback for complaints. I don't know if it means that you, uh, you adjust the way that you frame how you talk about things. I don't know what it is. All I know is that we have a big impact on whether or not new people get into these games that we love. And I know that 90% of the time, us being incredibly upset about a mechanic or not liking some new change is really just because we love and are passionate about the game. We've got that love, we've got that passion. But we need to avoid only expressing it with negativity. We can't be those guys. All right. Thanks, everybody, for watching. See you next time.